The term cozy front porch is trending on Pinterest right now. So we just made this cozy porch rule sign and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. If you like to do it, build it or make it. So do we. And we have new videos each week. This week, we're doing some cozy front porch decor. A new porch leaner. And you know us, we love a good porch leaner. And summertime is the best time for porch leaners. And if you've been out on Pinterest lately, you'll see on their trending tab that cozy front porch decor is up like 1,000%. So we decided to create a new take on an old classic, our porch rule sign. It was originally a cricket project, and it was pretty big, and it wasn't so cozy. So we thought we'd take it, shrink it down a little bit, update some of the fonts, give it a more cozy, classy paint scheme, and create a new DIY front porch leaner kit. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We're gonna use some quarter inch MDF. This is gonna be for our backer and our words. Then we're gonna put a frame on that. So we needed some 11 16 square trim. I think that's where we got it from. We're also gonna be using our Foxy Hughes paints and we're only gonna do this in three colors. So this is gonna be super easy to come together. We're gonna be using Ash Avenger White, Midnight Bandit Mask, and Heist Haze. We'll bring it all together with some of this Starbond Thick and some brad nails. Now, don't worry. If you're purchasing this kit online, you won't have to have the MDF backer. You can always purchase a project board from your local home improvement store, and you can do the same kit with a project board instead of the MDF backer. Step two, we're going to make our design. This was a design from back in the Cricut days. I had to go find it. I searched across a couple of laptops and my Google Drive. I finally found it. So there aren't many design elements. All I had to do was go in and update a couple of the fonts, and I think I added one additional saying. We do have a few light burn design tips and tricks, so I'll meet you over there. Kim has made the design, but she's left it in Adobe Illustrator. Now I can export this as an SVG and then import it into Lightburn, but I'm gonna show you a quick trick. I'm just gonna grab my design, Control C to copy. We'll go over to Lightburn, Control V to paste. Now it comes in as an engrave or a fill, but that's fine. That's fine for now. We'll work with this. We'll get it on my work area. I'm going to need a backer for this thing because this is going to be a sign. How big is it? So I'm going to draw a rectangle first. All right, and we'll make it the size of this thing. So right now the width is almost 43. I'll copy that, grab this, paste, go down and get the height, 14.3 something, copy, grab my square, and paste. All right. But I'm going to need some room on this thing, and then it's going to have a little frame piece, so I need to account for that. Now I know our frame, our little frame pieces are 0.66 or two thirds of, a, of an inch. But we're going to need a little space between the frame and the words, so we'll double it. We'll say times two. I'm going to need this space on both sides of this thing, so we'll go times two one more time. All right, so I need to add 2.64. And what is our, so 14.36, close, 14.36 equals 17. Oh, that's nice around, that's a nice round number, 17. Now, what is the height? Just about 43. So we'll say two, I forgot what it was. 0.66 times two times two plus 43, 43. 45.64, okay. 45.64. All right, so here's my backer. Now let's go ahead and grab these. We'll just make sure they're lined up in the middle. 
perfect. It's my backer. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab these. I'm going to put these on the red line also. Now I'm going to come over here and do a stroke or an offset. We'll offset. But I'm going to offset it inwards. Inwards. 0 0.01. So I'm making the backer here and I'm making the score marks. Right? And we'll make these on the blue line. And now I'll grab the red one again and we'll drag it up here. So doing this... When I cut out my letters, it's going to remove some material. It's going to remove 0 0.01 inch of material all the way around. So if I did my score marks the same, you'd be able to just see the outline of the score mark. So by bringing it inwards 0 0.01 inch, when I lay my letters on top of them, you shouldn't be able to see my score marks. And you'll notice doing it that way, it took the middle of the letters out like all those little, little inside pieces which is good for me that way if it's not perfectly lined up you're not going to see that little inside piece all right so this is good to go let's make sure it's centered that's my backer and now here are my words now i'm using i'm using blades on the eon nova 14 so that everything doesn't fall through i'm going to give this a frame also I'll give this a frame. We'll set it to the red layer. Now my words, let's make sure this is centered. Now my words, I'm going to go ahead and put on layer 10. All right, and now I'm going to come over here and double click this layer. I want tabs. I'm going to say automatic. Ooh, that's a lot of tabs. And we'll say tabs per piece. We'll start with two. All right. Now I'll come over here. I'll click on this. Come over here and click tabs. This is add and delete tabs. Just going to zoom in. I'm going to add a few more tabs here just to make sure this thing stays in its little frame and I don't lose all of its little pieces. So I'm going to do that. Actually, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I might add one or two. I'll add one here. I'll add two out here. Doesn't look too bad. I think I'm going to keep it. If I hold shift, I can delete some of these tabs. Like I don't need it to hold the inside of the E. Or the R. Or the O. All right, once I get all my tabs right, I'm going to make sure if my cut power is 50%, I'm going to come down here to my cut power, and I'm going to cut that in about half. Actually, I'm going to go about like 35%, so they're easy to knock out. All right, I'm going to grab everything now. Let's move my score up to the top. To recenter. Step three, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm gonna take this quarter inch MDF, this huge sheet, over to Eon Nova 14, and we're gonna cut it out. Our letters and our backer are all cut out. We even have the score marks on our backer. If you purchase the DIY kit, not to worry if you can't score your backer because your letters will come in a frame which you can help use for perfect placement. Now we're gonna use our backer to measure our pieces for our frame. I'm just gonna lay the backer on the frame pieces, mark it, and we'll cut it with our pocket saw. These are very precise measurements. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get those measurements. <laughs> with my eyes and a measuring stick. My because eyes aren't gonna... what they used to be, Kim. They're not that precise. Oh, it is like it is like 15.68. <laughs> okay, I am not gonna figure out where 15.68 is on my, uh, I'm just gonna, here we are. Here we are. There, way easier. 
And if you don't have your own pocket saw, you can also still add a frame to your project board. You can take this right over, because this is so small, 11 16th, which is like two thirds of an inch. It's in the trim department. Yeah, you could just take it right over to their little miter saw that they have over in the trim area and mm -hmm. cut it right there. So or this is super easy to make. Get yourself a little uh, trim saw. I'm out of room, I'm hitting the, uh, I'm hitting the wall. So basically I took these two pieces, my two side pieces, and I laid them on the edge of our backer. Tim's out of frame. I laid them on the edge of our backer. I'm gonna get it nice and flush. I'm gonna take my, my piece of trim, put that up against, and then I'm gonna draw my mark. Perfect. Oh, yep, pretty perfect. That is perfect, nice job. Step four. <laughs> now we paint. <laughs> we're not gonna use the paintbrushes. We're gonna roll it. And we're actually gonna keep it in the frame this time. I know we say don't keep it in the frame because it gets all oozy down in the corners and the, and the cracks and stuff. But we'll be painting it black, so I think we'll be fine. And you don't wanna leave it in the frame too long after you've painted it because otherwise you'll kind of, if it does ooze down in there, you'll basically paint it into the frame and it'll be hard to get out. I told you this was gonna be easy. We've already done our letters. We just left them right in the frame so we could do them all as one board. Next, we're gonna do our frame pieces. We're just gonna paint these that same color black. We're gonna paint our backer with modified tube socks. This is just the base coat. Now, I had said earlier that this was Ash Avenger. That is pure white, but I don't wanna make this pure white. I was wrong. We are gonna make this like an off-white, which is modified tube socks. Give it a little rusticness. <laughs> well, we're gonna do a paint technique on it. If you've been watching our Test Cut Tuesdays, wow. Wow, somebody's going in. Perfect, perfect amount. <laughs> no, you're gonna need a lot more than that, oh. I think. <laughs> yeah. If you've been watching our Test Cut Tuesdays, you know we're kind of on this kick with this wood grain tool. And I think that the wood grain backer for this particular sign will give it that nice little aged front porch sign feel. So we are definitely, ooh, quickly go through and because otherwise that stripe is gonna be there. That's another, here's our tip for painting. When you pour it directly on your board like this, you've got to spread it out quickly or that S shape that we put on there will soak into the board and you will see it. Even after two coats, you might see it. But again, we're going to put a technique, paint technique on top, the wood graining technique, and you probably wouldn't see it then, but I didn't want to leave it sitting there soaking in. I would recommend a paper plate. I would too. <laughs> Garrett would too. <laughs> A few more features of this Foxy Hughes paint that you see behind us. Not only is this acrylic paint, this is an outdoor acrylic paint. So you can use these on any of your craft projects, including and especially for your outdoor craft projects. So if you are doing any of our door signs, any of our porch leaners, this is the perfect paint to use for those projects because it does have those outdoor properties that's gonna allow you to leave this on your front porch. It is UV resistant, weather resistant, mildew resistant. So it's gonna be great to, to paint these signs and leave Keep outside. Outdoors, yeah. yeah. Done. Now we're gonna add a faux wood grain effect to our backer. We're gonna use this wood graining tool and it's really pretty easy. We have our secondary color. This is Heist Haze. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep a wet roller. You want it wet. Now we're always saying keep it sponge-like. But for this one, you want it a little more wet than just sponge-like. Then we're gonna lay down a strip and immediately come in with my wood graining tool where I'm gonna pull and rock my wrist back and forth as I'm pulling. All right, we Let ready me... to rock and roll, rock and pull. We're gonna tag team it. All right. 
Now I got the small curves facing towards me and they get bigger as they get away from me, all right? I'm gonna lay it down nice and easy, nice and even with two hands. And I'm gonna pull it towards me and slowly rock away from myself. And now slowly rock back towards myself. All the way is pulling. Slowly rock away. Keep rocking. Bam, there we go, there's one. And this is gonna kind of give the effect of the pickets that we used the last time. So, you know, that's my, what I'm going for here. I'll try to keep a little bit of a gap between them. Yeah, perfect. Doesn't need to be straight though. These are reclaimed wood planks. So give me a little bit more, a little wider. Yeah. All right, go for it. So good. You're so good at this. It's pretty easy. All right, do it again. All right, I'm gonna lay it back further now so they don't all look the same. I'm gonna drag and roll towards me. The real key is, even if you roll your wrists fast, keep a nice consistent pull. So I'll try to roll my wrist faster. This time. Nice. Mm. You're like a pro at this. I feel like I'm a pro at this. <laughs> I've been doing it so many times now. Probably do it with my eyes closed. Ready? I'm gonna need a little more paint right here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'll just do it back. Alright. Do it with my eyes closed. Ready? Uh, don't do it with your eyes closed. Now, the intention, these look like individual planks now, but the intention isn't so that the line, words line up with each one. I'm gonna just let them go across them. That was with my eyes closed. <laughs> wow, that looks great. It does look great. <laughs> I do say so myself. I do say so myself. Now with this one, with this technique, some there are spots that have a little bit that have a thick, what like am I trying to say? To it. Well, a yeah. A thick deposit of the paint. Right. There are areas where the paint is still very thick from pulling across with that wood graining tool. It kind of cooled in some places. So we're really going to let this dry for a while and make sure all of those kind of thicker paint areas are nice and dry before we start adding our letters. But I can still see my score marks through the paint. So I'm feeling pretty good about assembly. <laughs> Step five, time to assemble. We're gonna bring it all together with a little bit of the Starbond Thick. And for the frame, we're gonna use a little bit of wood glue. We're gonna put the Starbond inside of the score marks. We're gonna pop out the letters out of the frame and then glue them onto the board. Then we'll glue, we'll use both glues for the frame, put it on, flip it over, and tack it with a half inch brad. The nail, not the guy. Now, that stuff is optional, so if you do not have a brad nailer, you can always use the wood glue or even a little of the original Gorilla Glue, which I thought maybe was behind me. 
that will also hold it. Just put something heavy on it and let it, don't move it, let it have a good 24 hours to dry. But we're gonna go ahead and nail it so that we can stand it up and show it to yeah. you. Yeah, we're impatient. <laughs> What do you think? Did we nail cozy front porch? This is definitely a little more cozy than our last one with the cricket. Yeah, I think this would be great on a front porch or any porch where it says porch rules. I think it's awesome. I love everything that it says. I love the fonts. I think they fit their sayings perfectly. What else would you put on a cozy front porch? What else should we make as a cozy front porch idea? Uh, we're thinking about lanterns. What do you think if we make another lantern to go? Because you got to have a little flame going, a little mood lighting. <laughs> so I to think spark uh, the flames. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be perfect. Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. And that is also the best way to get this SPG for free. And if you don't have your own laser, but you still want to make this kit, we will have the words kit in our store at kngmakeit.com. I am about out of time. I got to go relax, look at some stars and read a book. <laughs> you got to go make something else. And we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And this is a perfect balance tonight. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 we're in. Oh. We're in. Oh, pretty good. Extended. Hey, do you guys love the wood grain back there? It's beautiful. I love it. You did a fantastic job. Oh, thanks, Dave.